Now let's look at an out-of-bound write in the firmware of a Wi-Fi chip on a system on a chip. Specifically, a Qualcomm system on a chip, which is frequently used in smartphones. And with typical smartphone socks, you have a primary application processor, which runs the main code, the main operating system, and that's what you normally think of as the CPU of the phone. But because it's a system on a chip, it's a tightly integrated package that has a whole bunch of other subcomponents on the same silicon. And often for modern socks, you're going to see things like the wireless capability all kind of built into the same little what's called IP component, intellectual property unit. So things like cellular, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth can all be on the same sock. So the wireless capability is sometimes called the baseband just to generically refer to wireless capability. So this is the CPU and that's the Wi-Fi modem slash baseband, Bluetooth, all this sort of wireless functionality could be incorporated into the same intellectual property unit. So in the research, they were talking about uh, this subsystem as saying there's the baseband subsystem, there's the modem firmware and the WLAN or Wi-Fi firmware. And this is all completely separate from the Linux kernel running uh, on the main application processor and, you know, the user space components like the Wi-Fi daemon. Now, the information given for this vulnerability is such that I'm not even going to have you try to find the flaw because this is the pseudocode and it's a little too trivial to, you know, try to find the vulnerability. What you've got is a global buffer that they've helpfully described as 10 times B0 plus 6 large. There's going to be a 6 header and then 10 entries, which are B0 each. And then we've got an attacker controlled length that's going to come in while it's parsing some Wi-Fi packets over the air. And it's going to take over the air data as your source, a fixed size of 44 as the size to copy. But then this part where it mem copies to the destination, it starts at the base of the buffer and then plus six because there's this header and then item count times B0. So item count is plus plus to each time through the loop but the attacker controls the length, they control the exit condition, so they control how many times it goes through the loop, which means ultimately if this item count is allowed to get equal to or greater than 10, then all of a sudden you're going to be stepping outside of this global buffer. So that would look something like this. If this is the global buffer of a header and then B0 things, 10 of them, then ultimately it's copying 44, skipping B0 forward, copying 44, skipping B0 forward, and ultimately once the item count gets greater than or equal to 10, it's going to be copying past the bounds of the global buffer into other globals that happen to be adjacent. Well, what was the fix for this? Unfortunately, it's proprietary code and there's no patch analysis. So we don't know what the fix for this was.